Welcome everyone to another episode of the Definitive Crusade. I'm your host, Johnny the Scream Machine Hughes. And joining me this time around, it is, of course, the Frightful Freya. Hey guys! <laughs> we wouldn't be the Definitive Crusade if we didn't have our own Nightmare. It's Matthew. Oh, I am the Nightmare. <laughs> Not related to DC nightmares. <laughs> I'm so scary. He hides his face to save us. It's the Thirteenth Crusader. <laughs> the Thirteenth Crusader. <laughs> when I see us. When I see us, Senor. <laughs> okay, that's good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, great yeah. intro. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Um, I know. Last time around, I know. Last time around, we said we weren't. I promised I wasn't going to. Um, take the the mickey out of a certain character but matthew have you seen all the tri- twins trends this week telling me i've been there must be like three or four different websites telling me that dc's planning the death of a certain character have you seen this i have not seen any of these this is new to me all right so check out screen rant for one of them who was saying that dc is setting up a certain character for a for another Xing. Now I'm not taking the Mickey out of this man. I'm bringing it up because it's a legitimate concern. He's your favorite character, and they're talking about, of course, the Red Hood with him being um, frightfully scared of everything at the moment. So, dude, are you worried? Uh, yeah, <laughs> if they're going to kill him off again, it's, he's already been through so much. My poor, poor boy. He's been through so much. Just <laughs> give him a break. Listen, I said I was going to call them, and I meant it. You don't call him again. Just, yeah, just, I got their number on speed, though. I, it's I, like I, Dick Grayson being sexualized. They just got to keep killing Jason. Yeah, they just, oh, my God. I wish they would stop because there's so much more they could do with Jason's story than just be like, oh, guess what? Jason's died. Oh, he's revived. Oh, no, he's dead mm-hmm. again. It's, I mean, they, it's, it's not funny. It's not entertaining at this point. There's so much more yeah. you can do with the character than just killing like, them off. Red revived. Dying Hood. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> as much as I, as much as I'm not a big Red Hood fan, and that, that's on the record, I, I think yeah, you, you know what, we've got to get out of the cycle because for me, it's uh, it, I don't know where it goes now that if it if it's if he's going to get killed because he's scared to act or scared to act or whatever, then that's on bats more than it is when the, we got crowbars. I just yeah. think DC, come on, man, you know, Move over you, Kenny, you ain't got nothing on us. Yeah, just, at least when it's when I'm more than Kenny from South Park. Yeah, oh my well, God, they killed Kenny! They could have at least. Oh my done God, they killed Kenny! Yeah. Oh jeez, <laughs> they could have done something like what Supernatural did when Dean was afraid of everything. That episode was hilarious, but they could have mm-hmm. done something like that. You don't have to kill him off. Remember, I think, is- I think what Johnny says is a good shout. When he first died. It was the Joker. It wasn't on Bats, really. Yeah, no. Bats was caught up with doing something else. And then was just too late to say more. Whereas if they kill him off this time, it is a result, a direct result of Batman's actions. Mm-hmm. Which, the way the story's te- or the way the story's going in that run, it doesn't seem like it's even going to have that big of an effect on him. Which, then, what's the point of killing him off then? Well, DC have got this thing going on right now where the heroes are being painted as the bad guys. If you've been reading Detective Comics, uh, the the huge run that Ram V's on is now ramping up to have um batman ostracized from gotham city you've got waller in the t- titans book trying to set everybody up against the, the heroes you know it's you've got catwoman against batman you've got the whole bat family against batman Is are batman they doing the that one to one wonder woman and yes and, yeah well they're doing it with wonder woman definitely um so i don't know i, I don't know if it's a, a trend of dc that they're going down this excuse me if we're going down this route but for me i just think you know i can't I said this before. Why can't we just let bats be bats and, and be done with it? It's Jason like there's Todd some sort of Mortal it. Kombat going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's my one of my favorite one of my favorite storylines is Red Hood and the Outlaws. Mm. That was that was how you can write Red Hood's character without him just dying all the time. Yeah, as he I actually it. goes on an adventure with a, a group of people. You know, with Bizarro, with Artemis, they actually have a storyline having to essentially of mice and men Bizarro because of the effects that he was having on the reality. That was really good. That was entertaining. And this might be come as a surprise, but I agree with you a million percent. Mm-hmm. I I actually agree as well because I think um, 
I like the fact that they, they were black. They were the black sheep trinity, weren't they? Essentially, yeah. the, the failed Batman, the failed Superman, and the failed Wonder Woman bound them together to do what they need to do. It's just a, at this point, it's just a rumor. I've seen it on a couple of websites already this week. I just thought I'd bring it up. Sorry. Well, I'm glad you brought it to my attention. Yeah, this is the first I've heard of it. It's not a rumor. <laughs> it's not a rumor. <laughs> No. I like that one. That was yeah. good. <laughs> All right. Okay. Enough rumors. It's time to get onto the books. Now, we're going to look at a couple of books from a couple of weeks back before we look at the more recent stuff. Um, reason being is um, a book dropped, and Matthew has been primed, primed for this book. So I would be a poor friend and a poor horse if I didn't let him have his have you say so at this point we're going to talk about justice league versus godzilla versus kong written by bum, brian, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> brian bucciolato uh, christian juice on art lewis guerra is on colors richard starkins and comic crafts jimmy betancourt are on letters um first question i've got out of the head. why is hobby in such a douchebag i don't know Matthew, take this away. I, I, I will have to agree with you because uh, the main. So we, we first start out with the book with uh, uh, Clark and Lois just sitting on top of the Daily Planet because Clark's about to propose. He's getting everything, you know, ready because he wants to be married. And then we see our first look at the big man himself, Godzilla, coming Holy in on look. the scene. Holy bum, 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 bum. Holy uh, look. It's it's not the only look. Uh, admittedly, admittedly, we do only get two shots of Godzilla in this book because there's this one, uh, and then it goes twelve hours earlier because this is kind of like the hook, and then it goes into the exposition of the story, and then we see Godzilla again at the very end. I will have to say both shots, both art pieces of Godzilla, are mm, chef's kiss. They are so fantastic to me. They are really well done. They really capture the terrifying and magnanimity, magnanimity of Godzilla. It's it's really, really cool. Really well done. But like I said, it jumps over to 12 hours earlier and we get the exposition of Clark having uh, this thing in his head where he's trying to save the whole world at once. We see cameras of him just zipping back and forth between crime scenes because he's trying to get the world in a decent situated shape before he takes his first vacation ever to, so that way he can have everything ready and nothing can interrupt him you know proposing to Lois it's it's kind of cute it's kind of cute uh, but we see you know how uh, which flash is this is this Barry I don't I don't remember yeah, if they say Barry. his name or not it'll be Barry um, but Hal and Barry are talking they're essentially discussing what's going on and then uh, Kara steps in and says hey I'm the superhero uh, for this run, uh, I'm just replacement Superman for now so that he can take vacation. Um, Superman fights Titano. And back to the comment about Hal being kind of a douche is because when Hal and Barry join Superman as he's flying Titano back to prison, Hal's like, uh, are you sure you want to get married? It's, it's only like, you know, sealing the rest of your life away. You know, you're pretty much getting giving up everything. Uh, you're not going to have a life after being married. It's it's a really kind of a crappy thing to say as a friend. So I don't I don't understand the direction of why uh, the writers wrote his dialogue like that in this one. That that did kind of upset me that Hal was being just kind of like douchey, douchey. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but the, his other friends are all supporting. We see uh, Diana uh, being very supportive friends, saying yeah, you Diana and Lois does. deserve it. Hmm. I agree. Diana seems lovely. And then we uh, uh, switch over to the uh, to the villains. Uh, we see Black Manta. Uh, we see uh, what's it? his name's Frost, isn't it? Captain Cold. Captain Cold. Thank you. My brain was my brain was short circuiting. Uh, Lex Luthor, Gorilla Grodd. Uh, they're all planning this heist on the Fortress of Solitude so that way they can seal the mother box and then lock the uh, Justice League in the Phantom Zone. Uh, they go there. They set up an alarm. Uh, the Justice League minus Superman uh, go and try to uh, stop them. 
I did kind of glimpse over, uh, we just saw a panel of it, but we did kind of uh, skip over a whole situation with Bruce and Batman. Yeah. Bruce or Bruce and Batman. Uh, Bruce and uh, Clark. Uh, Clark's, you know, getting everything ready. Bruce shows up as Bruce, not as Batman, but he's like, hey, I'm here for you, buddy. I just want you to know mm-hmm. I'm so proud of you. It's this really touching moment between Bruce and Clark. Um, but agreed. It, that that it, it's funny enough. That's why I agree. That I think the the touching parts of the book are those interactions, Bruce and Clark, Diana and Clark, for sure. It's 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 it. I like the direction the writers are taking with this, minus the how, minus the how, <laughs> minus the how. <laughs> um, we left that great big Godzilla for you just for there. You yeah. See what I'm talking about? That artwork is just. Mm, mm. And now this, I will have to put in this little tidbit. This is a Legendary's uh, Godzilla series because there's different Godzilla uh, iterations, right? This is specifically the Legendary Pictures iteration of Godzilla uh, from the 2014 uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Godzilla vs. Kong, those movie series. Uh Um, And we also see uh, the same thing with the other monsters, that they're putting Mm -hmm. the Legendary verse into this. So we see the Titans behemoth. We see Scylla, we see the Warbats, uh, which mm-hmm. Toy Master says, these are my toys! And then uh, stuff happens, they get uh, warped, well, they get warped to this facility, <laughs> uh, and then they see the Titans, the Toy Master's like, these are my toys, oh, how I wish! And then the stone glows, and suddenly all the monsters are attacking Metropolis, specifically with Godzilla, and we leave off with this beautiful, beautiful scene of Superman going to fight Godzilla. Uh, cool. There's a lot. There's a lot. I love this book. I just, right. I could gush about it. I love it. Well, easy there, Tiger. Don't I know. I'm too excited. Uh-huh. <laughs> Freya, are you, are you joining Matthew in his uh, up from the depths joy of this book? Um, I actually agree. <laughs> I like this book. Um, I like the artwork. Um, I like the relationships um, within the artwork between all the Justice League members and Clark and um, how their approach about things are different. The Hal Jordan thing, yeah, it's a douchey thing to say, but then again, Hal Jordan isn't like, you know. (laughs) So we've all got that friend who thinks he's a player. And in yeah. the Justice League, <laughs> it's how how player Jordan thinks he's God's gift to every woman. Yeah, I like, think it, the real player is the toy man. <laughs> <laughs> so like, how? Yeah, it irritated me, but at the same time, you can look at it as two different ways. But um, because, it, but then again, he's talking to Clark. I don't see Clark really playing the field. If he was talking mm. to Bruce, it would make more sense because Bruce gets around <laughs> what you're trying to say bruce has a He's lot a of playboy. options man <laughs> <laughs> you, you know uh, but like for that bat it, DNA, everybody. yeah <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised if batman has like a million kids floating around who knows but like it it, it i was like okay so it didn't bother me too much because it was health it was like freaking barry or something and i'd be like what the hell you talk about barry douchebag mm. <laughs> You're married. But that didn't bother me too much because I know people who are like that. And sometimes people say that crap as a joke. It just really depends on who they are. Um, and so mm. I liked the Bruce and um, Clark uh, conversation because he, he has a conversation that every superhero kind of needs to have. Um, is, are you, I'm happy for you. This is a great thing. But you got to remember that if you bring her into your life, like this she can be used as leverage if they ever figure out who you are like lex and you know Mm. and so but so it it kind of makes sense that conversation and i agree with that conversation like the amount of times sorry going to marvel the amount of times that mary jane like (laughs) now now she's got powers she's got powers now as old mj jackpot we call her now she's got magic powers yeah, we're not going to listen to that shit. So we're gonna go back to like actual Mary Jane. <laughs> I don't write this, you know. I'm so I'm really sorry. I know. I just it's it's stupid. But um, Agreed. no, like it I can't just give everyone superpowers. It's fucking dumb. Anyway, um, what Syndrome says once everyone's it, super, nobody no is. Yeah, exactly. 
it, 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 it it's like you have to think about that because it can be. But Lois gets kidnapped anyway. It's like that one cartoon where she gets kidnapped and she's like, sure you want to do this? <laughs> she's just like, it's another Tuesday. I'm kidnapped. <laughs> the, uh, Batman <laughs> Superman animated movie where she's, uh, she's, she's tied in a to chair. Yeah, he's yeah. like, uh, <laughs> like uh, do you know who I am? No, no I just sit still. Oh, and then one of them recognizes him, of course. <laughs> Dude, that's Lois Lane. That's Superman's <laughs> girlfriend. At which point the player goes, <laughs> Yeah, I love, I love, it's like the best. I love it. But there was also one where she's like, they're like, well, Superman's out of town. She's like, yeah. And then like Supergirl comes out that's of nowhere. <laughs> I love that. But like, yeah, Superman is like one of those superheroes. It's like, eh, <laughs> you yeah. know. Sure. But I like the story. I love Godzilla. I was like watching the old school Japanese like oh, yeah. guy in a costume Godzilla's yeah. when I was a kid. Me too. So this is just kind of like I if I can love those corny ass like 1950s like 1960s like Godzilla movies or whatever I you know there's nothing I'm not gonna like but I, I used to play like the old Godzilla uh fighting games too i like the melee oh yeah. they're great oh, king of the month it was so great but like i like yeah. this i like the um the uh the villains um i like how the whole thing's just great so um i'm gonna read the second one i do recommend this so far i usually give it about two books two or three books before i recommend people actually buy it mm. but so I far it's good all right, so. cool. 13th, are you a Godzilla fan? Yes. Did you like the book? Yes. Uh, well, it, I would say that it a little bit above the neutral line, and ah, uh, okay. I will explain why. Um, as readers and fans of all of these properties and whatnot, it's, it's good when you get to see this kind of interaction because that's what the fans want, right? Mm -hmm. You don't get this every day. I get that part. Um, Godzilla is one of those characters that, um, when you're putting this character in a comic book, same for King Kong, I, I think you have to be very careful of how you portray the character because they don't really go out there and give you dialogue. Mm -hmm. So there's that. I agree with the knight on the artistic view of Godzilla is definitely phenomenal. It's a well done thing. Mm -hmm. However, breaking it down towards the end of the book with Superman um, flying off the Daily Planet with a smile with Godzilla in the horizon is not something I would be laughing at, yep. in my opinion. Um, the interactions awesome. and things like that, what are we talking about here? Are we going to talk about a dialogue between superheroes or is this book about the monsters? So if I was a writer, I would probably have a different approach to this. However, when you have these collaborations, they could be tied editorially, right? There's only right. so much you can do. Well, there is, let's, uh, let me just throw this into your mix because it's a great point that you make. This book is seven issues long. That's it. So there is time for them to build some sort of tension. Great. And I think you're absolutely right. You're not going to get a lot of like angst between Kong and Godzilla. So that angst has to be driven somewhere. Or it has to be created from somewhere. So taking an issue out to set that up doesn't sound so bad when you've still got six in the back pocket. That is true. And I think that the, the love interest of Superman being Lois Lane is something that is almost universally, universally known. Mm. So for those that are truly monster fans, and our light J Justice League fans, which is hard to imagine, but mm -hmm. just in case, I guess this is fine because this mm -hmm. wouldn't come as a total surprise. And for them, it would be more detail. For people like us that know the day in the life of Superman and Lois Lane and their history, this is kind of like, okay, we're rehashing this. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've read both hundreds of Justice League books, Godzilla, King Kong, sure. I, I, I get it. I think the best interactions really are with the villains um, I think they did a good job there. Very Legion of Doomy. Um, mm -hmm. Toy Man is singled out right away as the idiot in the group. Um, I'm just a little disappointed with Grodd because Grodd's core personality is a lot stronger than what's being shown in this book. Yeah, but I might have an affair with King Kong. Well, Grodd is very <laughs> intelligent himself. Like, did they really need Lex Luthor for this? Or where's that animosity between them both? Because for them yeah. to work together... It's really like fire and ice, but they understand like all at least the point was made here. Like, look, we can't trust each other, but mm -hmm. we have to throw that to the side if we want to get something accomplished against our enemies. Mm -hmm. um, I think the way they went about this, plus infiltrating the Fortress of Solitude was a good touch because mm -hmm. you don't see that that often with this group. 
Mm-hmm. But what surprised me was that they, they had a target. They targeted a couple of things, a, a mother mm-hmm. box and a Ryan sled. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. And and let's just get out of here. And we came what we, you know, we got what we came for. Fine. I, I just think that um, for something like this, I, I just think that it, the dialogue with the heroes kind of bothered me a little bit because it was kind of blah to me. Um, but okay. I'm, I'm curious to see how the rest of this series goes. Okay. Um, it, it, you don't get Godzilla every day. I, I want to see if this artwork remains consistent for Godzilla. I think that's the key for me here. Mm, good call. Um, I think, just quickly, before I move on to the next book, I think this book reads like an episode of the Justice League cartoon um, in that the villains all pile together for no other animosity whatsoever between them. And there's lots of dialogue quirks in there, call them super friends or whatnot. Uh, there's no way that the villains would ever break into the fortress of solitude. Um, and then to steal to steal the um, mother box to get to the Phantom Zone, um, maybe I would have chosen the Phantom Zone projector to get to the Phantom Zone. I don't know, maybe it's uh, maybe the name of the thing tells you what it does. I don't know, just saying. Johnny, um, honestly, with Godzilla, right? If I were writing this book, why go to metropolis go somewhere where you don't really talk about all the time and godzilla descends upon that city where there's no time to react that to me is a disaster like he's in metropolis they're trying to give superman a day off but he conveniently comes to superman anyways Mm. well yeah well i I think when i think when when toy man you know made that wish it just kind of teleported uh everything everywhere the titans to different places i don't know the only uh, other thing I or a different monster right like well, maybe like a mothra or something well then he's not in the title so the only yeah. last thing i'm going to say is what pretty much what i alluded to at the start of this this uh review of this book is that this is supposed to be justice league versus godzilla versus king kong two panels of godzilla nary one of king kong i'm soon for false advertising thank you very much can I, have a book? can I have a book please that has the characters in and the title just saying yeah <laughs> grod, <laughs> grod when he sees kong he's dummy thick boy yeah. he's he's thick. Thick. um i'm sure there's i'm, I'm a fan one who likes the movies um this book will mm-hmm. have tons of stuff in there so no each to the one that's cool all right um we're going to take a quick break for one of our other shows uh, before we move on to our next couple of books, um, where shall we go? I don't think I've got it. I don't think I've got a King Kong advert whatsoever, <gasps> which is a. Oh, I'm no. not sure if he's done. I don't know if he's sure he fits. Especially the with the new Kong movie coming out, we should have one. Know, we should have one. We should have. Does one. he do the Conga? <laughs> yep, that's the whole movie. Dang, you spoiled the whole thing. <laughs> Kong and the Kong. All right, okay, it's time then for these guys. See what you think of this. Do you want to find out what makes a professor do his happy dance? Check out the all-timers comic book show only on the UCPN. Hello, that ad. <laughs> <laughs> the old timers comic book show where the horse aren't old but the comics more certainly are although truth be told one of the horses is definitely older now <laughs> all right okay next up is batman superman 20 uh written by the incomparable mark wade uh by dan mora tamra bonvillain who's got the best surname in all comic books is on colors uh and letters by steve Wands. hey look another cheater appearance and fishnets what more could you want? Fish nerds, let's move. Uh, <laughs> this was your choice for a book, so why don't you take this away, sir? Yeah. So the reason why I wanted to look at this was to cover right away. Said, "Return to Kingdom Come," mm-hmm. uh, one of my favorite Elseworlds stories, of course, with Alex Ross. Mm-hmm. Um, so curiosity. It was total curiosity. I walked into this blind, and um, I like the opening. Very basic. You know who you're dealing with. You're talking about the multiverse. You're talking about Barry Allen. It's all kind of makes sense. Um, I love the the opening panel. Kind of gave you a glimpse into all the different um, Earths that have been explored. One thing that kind of uh, took me for a little bit of a surprise, because I, I've kind of been out of the DC loop for a little bit, 
was the infinite number of parallel alerts. So we've gone from infinite, we've gone to 52, we've gone to dark multiverse. I, I guess it truly is infinite, at least for now. So I guess that's good. You can go into a variety of different stories with different iterations of heroes, depends what you want. The next page, I liked it even more. You get the Batman uh, Gotham by Gaslight, you get the Red Sun Superman. So a lot of these stirred up a lot of good memories. So I was feeling good, uh, the Dweller uh, Dent Joker, uh, the Dark Knight, obviously, uh, the Frank Miller version, so that Earth. Um, as the story progressed, I, th I thought that the, the, it threw me off a little bit because I'm like, okay, you get these pages, you're all over the place, but now you're somewhere, but where are we? So I had no idea what Earth we were talking about. I was going to assume it was uh, a slightly different Earth, if not our prime Earth. I don't know. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. Either way. I just felt like the the Superman personality to me was a little off. I, I felt that he was a little too emotional uh, for my taste in this book. However, the, the premise of the story, from what I understand, and without reading any other issues prior to this, is that um, he befriended someone who was getting close to, to him and, and kind of mm -hmm. like a sidekick to Superman. I guess that's interesting or whatnot, but, and he got lost throughout the multiverse. Okay, so now you have a reason to go back into the multiverse and try to find this person. Mm -hmm. um, the plot, I, I had no issue with the plot. And it's funny that Barry Allen's like, hey, I'll make you a cosmic treadmill, but I'm not going with you. I thought that kind of threw me off. Douche. Yeah, it's like, hey, guys, you know, I'll help you out, but good luck. So whatever, you have Batman and Superman trying to find a friend of theirs or an ally on another mm -hmm. Earth that has not been charted yet. I like that concept, and now you get to see a different Earth and kind of find out what happens on that Earth. The scene with the um, cemetery in here reminded me a lot of Days of Future Past with the X-Men with the other mm -hmm. publisher. I did stop to read every single tombstone just to see if there were some obscure characters that were uh, listed in there. But, you know, as the story progressed, I was like, okay, you know, they, they find their friend and whatnot, but clearly he's gone through some changes and trauma and some animosity and, and who knows. I guess if, if you keep following the storyline, we'll learn more. Mm -hmm. I, I, think it's, I think it's a solid footing for whatever story arc they're going to be going with here. Mm -hmm. it, it, well, one thing I always worry about with, with modern comics is even if you have a good start, can you maintain it and can you finish it stronger than what you mm -hmm. started? That's so, a good call. You know, with their ally here, Thunder or whatever his name is, or or David or both, I, I just felt he he his face just reminded me of Red Hood with an old mm -hmm. Captain Thunder costume from way back in the in the in the Bronze Age. Mm -hmm. So, but whatever, you know, I, I had an okay feeling with this. Curious to definitely check out the next issue. So I guess that's what's key for someone who's coming into this run completely blind. Cool. Freya, another Bruce and Clark conversation. It's like these two have got some bromance going on. Should Lois and Selena be worried? Don't even joke about that shit, please. Like, <laughs> I would love for people <clears throat> to realize that people can have friends. Oh my God, you can have yeah. platonic relationships. Say it ain't so, because it really feels like you can care about someone and not in a romantic way, you fucking perverts. Losers who have never had friends before. <laughs> I'll never be like to get married. <laughs> I like, care about everyone on this panel. Oh, thank you. But like, <laughs> the thing, it's just, no. Bruce just and this, yeah. Clark are just friends. That's how they've always been. And it's just a platonic relationship. And mm. anyone who's had a friend, like a close friend, a good friend, would know that. Indeed, like, my relationships with my friends is more confusing because I do weird shit with them. But, you know, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy confusing the hell out of people. But, like, no, it, it's a platonic relationship. Cool. Um, what but do you think about the rest of the book? The rest of the book, um, I agree uh, with 13. I thought, I was like, oh, I know that person. At the beginning, it was a bunch of nostalgia. Like, mm. oh, I know that, and I know that, and I know that. I am interested to see where this goes, um, and if they maintain it. Once again, this is why I have my 
two to three book rule before I start mm -hmm. buying anything um, just to make sure they maintain it and I don't get disappointed later on. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I, do, I always enjoy the superhero or villain themed like restaurants <laughs> that they have. Yeah. <laughs> they always just make me happy. I, I, they're ridiculous. I love it. I would totally go to this this restaurant if it existed. <laughs> um, and I love how they have the old Aquaman costume with like the, <laughs> the swimsuit shorts, and like <laughs> it's great. Oh my god! <laughs> it cracks me up. It's hilarious because it's all like the old school. I want to say eighties superhero outfits. No, but I um, get your point. Definitely. It, what what um, Superman outfit is? Uh, if you go back a page, uh, where he's uh, essentially handing the checkbook to the young man. That what? That's the Superman uh, at the bottom of the page. That one, yeah. Oh, that's, that's um. Composite Superman, is it not? Possibly. Yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> okay. it's Superman. Go on, Batman. thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Thirteen's laughing. Go on. Who was this one? The the composite Superman. We just covered him on the old timer yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. another man, man. Really? Yes. Yeah. a guy that was endowed with the powers of the entire legion of superheroes. Uh, go back and check the advert, the show out. It's all in there. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> hey, Johnny, if, I could, if I could interject for one second, mm -hmm. I think that a, another cool thing, aside from traveling throughout the multiverse, was not just laying down the basics of all the different worlds and possibilities. Mm -hmm. But another little curveball, a temporal difference. So not yeah. only are you just traveling to multiverses, but to different periods in time in out. the multiverse. Yeah. I did like that a lot because it is a little different. Yeah. Gives it a little bit of nuance, doesn't it, I suppose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice touch. Uh, Dan Mora, I think, is great on this book. I think Dan Mora has been great on this book from the, from the get-go, to be honest. Um, it'd be interesting to see him on a regular Bat book, which maybe not as chaotic. Um I, for one, am getting a little bit bored with Detective Comics and its long, meandering, seemingly going nowhere plot. Um, so try and maybe rein that in a little bit. Uh, but Mark Wade, um, are we fans of Mark Wade? Fred? I would say more for his older work. Yeah? yeah. Um, do you? Does anyone know who Mark Wade's favorite superhero is? Mm. Mary Jane. No. <laughs> the DC character. Lois um, No. <laughs> Samurai. No. Fred? Um, I don't know. Hot girl. Booster actually Gold. Superman. All right. Oh. Now, as much as you know him from Flash and some Justice League stuff, he's actually uh, a Superman fan. And then we did an interview with him over on Outside the Panels. The link's there at the bottom of the page. Just go to YouTube, type Outside the Panels, Mark Wade, and then bring up the pod. Have a listen to it. The second half is about his historical stuff, not just his new stuff. And then that he tells you that Superman is his favorite hero. The he's big... done some uh, Elseworlds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and yeah. I think I think he just likes the whole. I suppose, you know, like Captain America, Superman is the quintessential, the good guy, making the yeah. choices. Yeah. Freya, I we hmm. interjected. Do you have anything else you would like to say about this book before we move on? Nope. Nope. Freya's all like, just bring me my book and get on with it. <laughs> Stop waffling is what she's saying to me. I can hear it. We didn't hear the knight's opinion, though. Yeah. I mean, oh, sorry, Matthew. I thought uh, we no, go, go ahead. No, 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 Matthew. Go, no, for, it. Matthew. go, ahead. go for it. Uh, uh, I like the book. There, there's my opinion. <laughs> no, hold on. Because you, you, were, you were really quite keen. Let me bring this book back up. I, I'm sorry. I missed. I jumped the gun a little bit. No, no, it's um, all right. You said that you loved all the books in this yeah. in this pod. So, what was it about this book that you, you really liked? Uh, I really like the artwork. Uh, the, you know, for some reason, uh, we always have a comment of some kind about artworks, no matter what you know, what recording we do, mm -hmm. uh, what round of books we're doing. We always have a number of comments about the art uh how they've drawn legs how they've drawn faces how they've drawn action posters so on and so forth mm -hmm. but for every single one of these we've viewed for this week the artwork has been spot on pretty much and it's it's this one in particular 
the colors are fantastic. The art is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, all all limbs seem to be appropriately, you know, drawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even uh, Power Girl's uh, dead costume has a boob window in it. Yep, yep. I actually didn't notice that until you pulled up the uh, panel. There earlier. it is. <laughs> it's, it's got <laughs> a boob window. Um, I wonder really why she got shot. <laughs> 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 um, in in this panel uh with older older bruce uh the small detail of him having to wear like an exoskeleton because he's older i thought mm. that was a really cool just small attention to detail that's an overhang from the kingdom come storyline right uh, okay but still it, it's, it's it's well you're absolutely right it's well nuanced definitely matthew you're spot on you know the guys have gone back and said oh for doing kingdom come we need to make sure that the beats are the same. Same with the same uh, Kal El Superman suit mm -hmm. rather than the standard. Uh, this sounds like this journey was before it really hit the fan in Kingdom Come, which is a great excuse to go read the Kingdom Come. Hmm. That's a good call. It's it's yep. it's an intriguing story. I don't know anything about uh, Boy Thunder. Honestly, this is my first time hearing about Th Boy Thunder, unless mm -hmm. some deep memory resurfaces at some point. Um, it's, it's, it's intriguing. Now, admittedly, we're coming off of the back end of Godzilla. <laughs> and so like, I was, I was hyped for it. So I was already like up here, all the books that we read are like down here for me because Godzilla, uh, but still it's an intriguing story. I'm curious to see how it goes. I want kind of like what 13th said for the Godzilla book that mm -hmm. one artwork is going to, um, be consistent stay uh, uh the same route mm. all right cool it's uh i like i like uh the planet krypton you know phrase little ad uh advent about these superhero cafes they are entertaining <laughs> they are entertaining uh I, I think it's a really good book if cool. boy found the work at that restaurant would you be shocked at how much he charged <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're killing me. Uh. Killing, killing me. Oh, my God. Um, right, so um, it seems to me that we've been sleeping on the Batman Superman book. Um, so maybe we should think about looking at it again in the future. Um, who knows? Um, the next book up, it's going to be our final book as we are running out of time. Um, I've got to play this for you all first. Really sorry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the ninjas and the monsters are back with another <laughs> round uh, based off a mobile game app. Of all things, we have the uh, new Mortal Kombat comic out. Uh, Mortal Kombat Onslaught number one. Um, who to blame? All right, here we go. So there's a <laughs> list on this one. Here we go. Um, it is. Written by Dominic Cianciolo with Tim Seeley, who you might recognize from writing the um, Injustice book. Uh, Dexter Soy, Popman Lenderson, Joe Prado, Fist, Fico, Asio are all on art. Why we need that many artists, whatever. Colors by Hi-Fi and Josh Reed is on letters. Um, my comment before we get to Freya. The first more, more combat game. Anyone know when it came out? back in the 90s if i remember correctly 1992. yep all right so that's 21 years ago do i really need a comic book to tell me how to play a video game that's that old Freya, yes what do you think no but it's a good little uh refresher <laughs> for the youngins the, the youngins. newbies <laughs> the you know news. how many you know how many characters have been introduced since that freaking <laughs> the first game a there's a lot, lot of characters mm -hmm. A lot of the characters. So this is a nice little like rehash for people who don't know the. Because when I played the Mortal Kombat games, I didn't know there was like an overlying like story. I just thought, oh, battle royale, kill everything, cool. You know, <laughs> you get to beat people up, beat them up, the best them. ever, Fate finish them. them. Yeah. So I didn't know finish there was you. actually. I didn't know there was an actual like story to it. Um, he loves it in the movies. 
Of course I saw the movies. I was a 90s kid. I watched all the movies. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, the, the story's just for the movie. I thought they made it up like for the movie. And then mm -hmm. they're like, oh, no, this is actually the story. And now the story's gotten so ridiculous that freaking... <laughs> <laughs> that um Liu Kang has reset the world. <laughs> or was it was it Raiden who did it? Anyway, so now they're back to Mortal Kombat 1 again. So yeah, it it's it, it kind of read like I was like, this gotta be an ad for something, because it read like an ad, because all it's really doing in this book is explaining who the characters are, who their alliances are, motivations, all that jazz. Um, it wasn't really a story of anything mm -hmm. um so it was a uh, and the artwork um there it had some moments <laughs> where i was like okay well um that needs to be fixed it was like one page i think <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was like one page i think it's like page seven where um Hang what's on. her name Katana, um, is it Katana in the short skirt? Who makes not Katana the in the short skirt. It's um one of the black dragon chicks. What is her name? Um, she's with is Kano. It, is it that one in the middle? Yeah, look at her legs. Look at her skinny oh, ass man. legs. And her skinny, look, skinny arms. We are like, not all blessed with thickness. Okay, some of well, us. She's are, supposed have to the be carrot a, legs. She's supposed to be a fighter, so she should be blessed with the thickness. She's a fighter. Not everybody can be Chun Li. Okay. She's a fighter. <laughs> she needs to be blessed like Chun Li. Come on, man. <laughs> Get muscle oh, mass. Oh my god. <laughs> she's a fighter. She has to. And so, like, it's just little things like that. Like every once in a while, the legs are like invader zim looking and like <laughs> yeah, <she's kidding. laughs> it's true they're sticky. Like, they little sticky like the little sticks <laughs> so it's it's just it's just an ad obviously like you said for onslaught it's um i'm not even gonna get into the faces on the last page I have just... you did you i know i know you and matthew were gamers did you look at what how the app plays i don't play um mobile games because no. they're usually gotcha games for the most part yeah. so well, that's this... not true I do, but I haven't looked at this. Um, I have Mortal Kombat on my console, but I don't have it on my phone. This but is like a, having a controller. This isn't straight up like one on one. This is one of those games where you've got like a team of characters and then a team of characters, and then you press a button and your character does something and takes some damage off somebody else, and then their character does it. Then you go down in rotation around like this. It's not a strictly yeah. straight up Mortal Kombat. There are. Uh, animated elements in there that you know you have the finishing and all that sort of stuff going on but as a straight up fighting game it's nowhere near the the fighting techniques of say something like injustice 2 on the mobile yeah is, no i i the enjoy best. the button mashers i like those yeah. games um like i said i have i have the moral combat games on mm. console because i it's just it's the button mashing and getting like all tensed up and stuff that i like i don't like hitting auto right. and having my gameplay itself. Okay. <laughs> um, you know? We're going to go with 13 because Matthew, you're a gamer. So we're going to go gamer, non-gamer, gamer on this one. All right. So that's my logic. 13th. What's this? Battle combat. Does it work for you? Well, much to what will be your surprise. I am a gamer. Uh, first and foremost, to age myself, I was uh, around, obviously, when this came out in arcade format. You better be, because you're uh, there was plenty of asses that I kicked <laughs> back in New York playing this game, for, especially for the first few versions. So there's that. that. You can ask him yourself. I'm sure he'll have fond memories of me. His ass in this game. Who is your um, character? <laughs> <clears throat> mostly Sub-Zero. Oh, I was I'm, a Katana girl. Yeah. Baraka. Of course I was. <laughs> yeah. so, so I like Baraka because you could just cheese the, the dice. <laughs> no, red, red for me. Or, yeah. or Reptile. Reptile was also one of my other favorites. Sub -Zero oh, God. I like, the little, I like the little dragon. Wait, that's Tekken. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And after a while, a little bit of Johnny Cage. Luke I Kang was shaking head for you. <laughs> no. So my thing is with fighting games, you're, you're not a master unless you master every character. So that's the mentality I go into with any fighting game. So with the old Mortal Kombat iterations, I definitely stro uh, st strove for that. With this book, I agree with Freya. This, to me, is basically a source book or a guidebook 
kind of giving you an intro into people you may or may not know. And if you do know them, then what are they doing now? And what's what's the premise of this whole thing? With the history of Mortal Kombat, I think what I find impressive is that over the years, it's gone from something as simple to just like an arena fighting game, but now it has purpose. There's different factions. There's different reasons why the factions are against each other. Now you have other worlds intertwining with different leaders and things like that and different alliances that need to be formed reluctantly or willingly. So that's one thing that I like. But ultimately, for a comic book, it's tough to translate any movie or any game into a comic. Although, if walking into this, it's a good break from the norm of, of big two stuff in general. It, it's just saying like, hey, there's stuff on the horizon. We're bringing attention to it. It's the old uh, business approach of we're going to come up with a game. Mm -hmm. We're going to come up with a comic book that'll supplement the game, like get people excited for Mortal Kombat again. I just, one maybe somewhat negative comment I have is for as much as I just harped on Mortal Kombat Once Upon a Time was pretty uh, basic storyline. What made it really popular was like you had actual actors that were moving in the video yes. game back then. It was and so cool. So coming from that and then developing stories with each iteration was cool. I feel like now it's kind of stuck. So where are we going with this? Are we kind of rebooting? or with everything that's got all these characters like you said there's a huge stable of characters like what's the direction that's my curiosity um but the marriage between mortal kombat and dc is nothing new right for those that played mm. the dc versus mortal kombat game so th this is showing you too like it makes me feel good that there's still an allegiance there um to mm. work together to try to um bring more light to these characters because they just shouldn't be Toss to the side. The Mortal Kombat universe is definitely very interesting. Well, I mean, it's not just it goes beyond that. Nether Realm are the engine behind Injustice games, mm -hmm. so you know it's not just the DC versus MK game that they, they've got those relationships. Um, Matthew, is this <laughs> is this a, a, a book that's up your street? Uh, so I'm kind of going to go off of what Thirteenth said here seen as how it's a primarily exposition book i that's the reason why i enjoyed it it's because as freya said there are so many characters that have been added uh especially since i've when i, when I played see I, i'll give you a little bit of night lore here uh night uh w wasn't allowed to play <laughs> mortal Kombat <laughs> growing Me neither. up is this is this uh, because it was too violent and the girl it was too, too sexy. violent uh i i managed to sneak a game in once but the Mortal Kombat that I played was the the strange, I don't remember what game it was, uh, the strange JRPG take on Mortal Kombat where you played as like a young boy that actually went around and talked to villagers. Oh, and the, was, the, the, the one from like Xbox. Yeah. It was, it was really weird, but you played the story of a boy that, you know, it's his growing up story as the world of Mortal Kombat is evolving around him. It, it was strange. It was strange. But that was my first experience with Mortal Kombat. So it's not going to be the same as with everyone else. Uh, but since then, there's been so many characters added that I just don't know. Uh, and so seeing a book that, you know, goes into a little bit of detail, explaining the story, explaining the plot, explaining the characters, it was kind of a relief because now I'm like, okay, so that's what that person does. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's his relationship with this. Uh, it was nice. And I think it's a good book to set up interest in the upcoming game. Okay, cool. Is that it? <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> has anyone seen the graphics on the Mortal Kombat 1 game? I think they're the phenomenal. New one? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. They're so good. Just don't buy it on the Switch. The graphics suck on the Switch. But <laughs> who would play Mortal Kombat on the Switch anyway? Right. But yeah, they're beautiful. Like, they're great. The movement will, is what fascinates me, like the way it's mm -hmm. animated and whatnot. I will say yeah. that Mortal Kombat always makes me laugh because for all the gore that goes into the violence of the game, whether you're pulling out spines and spearing people, whatever. It's always the characters, the, the dress and the sexualization of them all um, that always gets everyone's uh, good up. It really kind of annoys me a little bit. I'm like thinking, oh, it's all right to stab and spear people with a great big thing and rip out someone's, 
you know, spying, but short girl in a short skirt, and whoa, people lose their minds. It's crazy. Or yeah, Kung Lao just taking his hat and slicing someone in half. Yeah. yeah. Well, as a resident old timer, remember back in those days, what was the main competition of Mortal Kombat? Was Street Fighter. Street yeah. Fighter was more grounded. You had a, a stable of characters as well, but it was stagnant, right? There wasn't really a big theme behind it. And other fighting games were definitely miles behind. When Mortal Kombat came out, the fatality was a, literally a game changer. Mm -hmm. And thus came the much more mature content and people gravitating to the arcades because nothing felt better than taking someone that thought they were they were the shit on a machine, thinking they were, you know, there for an hour. And then there I would come and take them off the machine and make them spend <laughs> tons of money trying to take me off. But uh, beating them with a fatality at the end, nothing more satisfying. And that's what made the game fun. But again, the maturity. Like, you know, you wouldn't do that in real life, I would hope. But in a video mm -hmm. game, sure, I'll take your your head off and with your spine yeah. attached and everything like that. It was cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll punch your gonads yeah. and make and, them and... just explode. Sure, yeah. yeah. In the video, in game, in game, in game, yeah, in game. Yeah. But the thing about the sexuality and whatnot is, there are obviously people who have never played the game because you can right. change their outfits. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wear the scantily clad outfit if you don't want to. Like, oh yeah, you do. You don't yeah, have. You do. Well, I that's personally what, would. I mean, well, that's obviously. what I'm saying. Right? I mean, <laughs> but also you got to look at the guys' costumes too. How many of the guys are going shirtless or you know close to? and how the guys are all super ripped you know and here's the thing guys and girls usually what they find attractive are different things women usually go for the muscular ripped dudes that you know alpha chad thing you know and they need a nice face and then the dudes are like boobs you know butts curves i want that you know <laughs> so they they sexualize both and i'm gonna just straight up say um, not everyone's attractive in this game, but like if you see like Scorpion, Sub Zero, you can take their masks off. And damn, did they not make these guys attractive? <laughs> Shao Kahn is pretty ripped, and he has a big hammer. Yeah, but like Bar everyone, Baraka. Yeah. yeah. Rain, you can take his mask off. Smoke, you can take his mask off. But like these guys are all attractive. So saying like they complain, oh, the women are sexualized. I'm like, the men are too. But how mm -hmm. what women view as sexy is different than what men do, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and and so because I'm like, I don't know any guy that freaking looks like this <laughs> in real life, uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so I'm like Hold on, uh, let me take off my armor. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, that is it always just amazes me that they're they whine about that. I'm like, just is there, is there a character in the in the game called Dad Bod? Because that would be me. Dad Bod? Absolutely none. <laughs> uh there there used to be. Oh. There used to be. He yeah. he, well, he was a he was a big drunk and he had a like he was Oh that guy. <laughs> no, no, Johnny, I don't think you understand. When I'm saying like a big drunk, I mean like a six foot five, four hundred pound. Oh that's right, right, okay. What you're saying? That's that's the that that's that, 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 that's like, dad's buds. That's dad's buds. That's dad's that's dad's buds. buds. <laughs> oh, he was, ate um, the dad bod. <laughs> it was Bo Bo Ray Cho. Bo Ray Cho. Yeah. Yeah, that dude is yeah. like massive. Yeah. I don't have time to do um, <laughs> Borracho in Spanish means drunk. Um, okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll awesome. change my name to that for a while. All right, we're gonna have a <laughs> we're gonna have a great time deal uh, deal of time left to go into this book. Uh, but I mm -hmm. thought we'd be, we better talk a little bit about it. This is a book that's caused a lot of controversy on online. I'm not quite sure why, because I'm some sort of idiot and think it's just a story about two people. What do I know? Um, Alan's got the green light, and it's number one of six. Uh, written by Tim Sheridan, uh, Sam Tommy's on art. Uh, Colors Matt Herms and Letters by Luke, Lucas Gattoni. Um, this book is set way back in the past. Um, and yeah, homosexuality is one of the themes in the book. Um, the viewpoints in the book are based in the past. So try not to get yourself bent out of shape about how people view uh, gay men um, predominantly in this book because that's back in the day, man. Back in the day, people weren't as open-minded as they are now. Um, we're not as liberated as we, we are now. Um, that said, um, the play, Sheridan, I think, plays a great deal of focus on uh, Scott's trepidation about being attracted to someone of the same sex. That then leads into fear, which leads into something else down the line. 
of course there's going to be some superheroes in the element there is, it is a bit hodgepodge it jumps time periods quite quite quickly at places and I, I found that a little bit hard i didn't think it was as as obvious as it should be and that bugs me because i think well if you're changing time period you should let me know that you've changed time period so i can get into it more rather than just think things are getting made way late of course the way things are jumbled up could have something to do with the climax on the last page freya did you have a chance to look at this book yeah what do you think <clears throat> um i got a little confused in certain spots probably mm. because of the weird time jumps that you're going on also can anyone keep anything a damn secret like, <laughs> 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 like he is the worst worst yeah. at keeping a secret like okay it is 1930s he has a gay lover he's taking a fucking photo with a german camera for some reason because he's not seeing what happens on twitter oh my god <laughs> oh my god so like he has a german camera which i was like but he's in new york how the hell did he get or california how the hell did he get a german camera why isn't he using a kodak also why are you taking a picture of yourself with your gay lover when you have no way to develop that yourself he would have to go to a professional professional photo shop to get Canvas, that developed Canvas. yeah yeah and everyone would fucking see the photo <laughs> you're not keeping it a secret you're broadcasting it to the world of course the government has this photo now you dumbass you <laughs> <laughs> like sympathy and empathy chop sympathy and empathy the i have style. zero for this stupidity. you, know, Freya, if you should write a book you should write a comic book called sympathy and empathy and oh what it would be it'd be like an angel and a demon just sat around <laughs> yelling at people for being dumbasses that would be for, i like, would buy that in a Freya, you write that book i will pay 13 times more <laughs> yeah. than yeah. i'm just i'm just i'm just channeling my uh <laughs> what's his name from that 70s show Girl. The oh dad. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> right. I look you at this. Want, yeah. Do you want to foot up your ass? Kind of foot up your ass, dumbass. Right. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, you literally. He's trying to. He's like, oh, I could be arrested and blah blah for this and kicked out of the military. Let me take a, you know, a photo yeah. and I get it printed. <laughs> yeah. In the 1930s, no. I'm like, you're okay. so stupid. <laughs> and and then like, then he's talking to uh, what's his name? The the his helper, his driver. Chauffeur. what's his name chauffeur and he tells him straight up yeah i have relations with i'm like if you were that concerned you wouldn't be running your mouth about it you wouldn't be telling anyone about it yeah. and i'm like you are the <laughs> worst at this like he even knows your green lantern i get it but like yeah. and then, uh, God, but, we're running sorry. out of time so i didn't sorry to sorry run around uh 13. well anyone who knows the history of alan scott knows that his weakness was wood Hey. Um, so here's the thing when, I, I love when people say controversy right T here, and take it for how you want it I, I really could care less what anyone else thinks I've been around long enough to know that controversy is a short lived thing when mm -hmm. you're talking about comic books especially with a character as historic as Alan Scott what makes the character last the history behind it so in reading this it's a revisionist history take it or leave it, right? What's the story here? Are we gonna talk about a controversy or are we gonna talk about something different? What's the angle? So with this book, it's all noise, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't care about the relationship. I don't care about anything else. It's like, what are you doing with this character? The one mm -hmm. frustration I have is when you go and do a revisionist history, it's no different than I watch watching a movie of an ancient timepiece in ancient Rome with people talking Shakespearean English, talking and bringing modern, bringing modern things into the past, right? Why don't we just Richardson, bring out cell phones, Richardson. social Richardson. media, if we're talking about a timepiece? The behaviorisms is also something that's going to get lost. So for a younger reader, they're going to think that this is how it was back then. That is not fully true. If you want to read old school Alan Scott, the books exist. If you want to read something in a modern with a modern twist, I would say maybe read uh back in the day a little bit do some research on a character and you're gonna see that my frustration is they don't know what to do with this guy that's a shout and that's pretty much the end of it because if they did know what they were doing we wouldn't be doing something like this now this is what it is this is what's out there 
everyone has different tastes, different uh, opinions and everything. But at the end of the day, the, the, the core story of the book, where are we going with this? Are mm -hmm. you doing this just to do controversy, negative attention? Is that your belief is still attention? Or are, are you in this for the long haul? If you're in, mm -hmm. in it for the long haul, you got to do something a little bit better than this and have a cool. much more solid foundation for the character. Fine. Good job. Well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Matthew, you can round us out on this one. Uh, when, when I first read it, you know, I, I was enjoying the book. Once again, the artwork for all of these, in my opinion, have been really, really well done. Uh, I read that whole, this is pretty good, yeah, definitely. Uh, starting out, uh, you know, with him talking with the uh, uh, Edgar Hoover about the situation and him essentially blackmailing, I was like, haha, that's kind of funny because that's something Hoover would do, LOL. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then it jumps into his relationship. You know, we've we've said it before on this channel. Like, if you want a relationship uh, between two characters and they are, uh, you know, homosexual, whatever, as long as that's not like the main focus of the book or the main mm -hmm. focus of their personality, we're okay with it. And I think that was actually kind of well done in this, mm -hmm. you know, because it's it's not the main focus. It's not their relationship being the main focus. It's mm -hmm. Scott's reaction to that relationship. It's it's his relationship and how uh, the history between these two has changed him into who he is today and how he mm -hmm. acts with other people. Uh, just this traumatic event. <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. I I kind of like that. Okay. Cool. I, I think but, the strongest panel of this book is really at the end, right? Yeah. If he's a inmate or somebody, sorry, um, night. If he's committed into a, a psychiatric ward or he's under treatment at Arkham because he is a Gotham citizen. Did all this really happen, or is all this what he really wanted to have happen, or what's what caused him to land in in Arkham? So that's an angle there that I think that it's it's it could be an interesting beginning for a new twist okay. versus what we've already seen. I would but, but, real quick. I will have to say yeah. to finish out my thing on the book is that Thirteenth brings up a really good point about something that I didn't even think about uh, that has now kind of changed my opinion a bit on this is that it's a revisionist history uh, kind of deal showing a non-accurate representation of something that happened in actual history in our past about uh, how uh, gay relationships worked within the military and how it was how it was uh, um, accepted or Not more accepted. accurately unaccepted. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good shout, Thirteenth, uh, because I, thank you. Yeah, I I would hope. Sorry, I would hope that this panel. I would hope, and when I read the, read the title for the next one's called Conversion, I was under the belief that this is conversion therapy to treat the homosexuality out, out of him, yeah. rather than make the, his homosexuality a figment of his imagination. So I hope they don't go down that route. I think. Alan Scott has been uh, has been gay for a number of years now, um, and I'm all right with that. And I think, well, you know what? If if you're going to write this character, um, then that is going to be a part of it for sure. The same way that Batwoman's uh, relationship is going to be part of her story. It shouldn't be the all in all and off. That's all it's about. We saw what happened to the Batwoman book when they yeah. did that. It sunk. But, you know, the, the fact is, it is a part of these characters and it should be explored as such as a part of those characters. So I hope that the, the homosexuality element of Alan Scott isn't some figment part of his imagination. And I think the, the key if you put your old timers hat on, Johnny, Alan Scott, uh, Wildcat, Ted Grant, uh -huh. all those JSA characters, they are the foundation of DC comic book superhero teams, uh -huh. characters. This is where it all started. Uh -huh. So the fact that we're almost a hundred years from when these characters were first uh, out there, they've come a long way uh -huh. and th their history is very convoluted. And that's yeah. where my challenge is either you want the JSA in or you want the JSA out. If you want them in, why are you rewriting 90% of their background? You There's have to write it for a modern audience. You can't correct. write, no, you don't. You can't write, you can't write a comic book based in the 30s and with 30s mentality and expect people of nowadays mentality to go and read it and think, well, this is great because there's, there's going to be people who get it's upset. It's a fine line. It. It's hard to juggle that, but that's the challenge, right? Well, we'll that's see how this goes. 
we'll see how yeah. this book well, manages that. I, I have a bad feeling that it's going to go the way of the Batwoman books. I feel well, like the whole story is going to revolve around his sexuality and it's not going to talk about anything else. Um, and we're going to get cuts away from action scenes again. And <laughs> I'm very not... And I don't want that to happen because I was very upset when they did that with Batwoman because she's such a great character. And now where is she? She's just right. not... That's a shout. She's nowhere. That's a, shout. That's a shout. Right. So there you go. There are four books. Four totally different books. She's on um, Planet Krypton, Freya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's waiting tables. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I have the redhead over here? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Speaking of redheads, this is Freya's last bat girl. Yeah. Sorry, and the red hair's going away. Thank you for sharing. Don't yeah. forget to check out the UCPN for all your favorite shows, including Freya. K-pop Cosmos, where we talk and highlight K-pop groups and soloists. Um, this next month, we are going to touch on one of the biggest uh in recent years companies we're going to be talking about a big hit group Woo! so Woo. exciting for us <laughs> and also terrifying <laughs> uh 13th the old timers comic book show where the comics books are old and the whole most certainly are not old really well done. except for one person thank you oh <laughs> i'm getting don't you be giving me i have no trouble with these two <laughs> Why the guilty conscience? I wasn't naming you. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. <laughs> All right, Matthew. Uh, you can find me over on TikTok and Twitch uh, underneath the Late Night Channel. I also have a YouTube under the same name. It's for all my Twitch vods. Uh, I make D and D content on my TikTok, so go check out that. And I play video games on my Twitch, so where I just hang out with people like that, uh, people who like video games. My latest yeah. in has been Valheim, which is Viking Minecraft. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> and of course. We we have mentioned it earlier. Don't forget to check out OTP for loads of uh, interviews with comic creators, both big two Kickstarters and indie, indie guys and girls. It's all there. Um, troops, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for spending the time, Freya. Yeah. Night, 13th. No problem. Um, it's been an absolute blast. Sorry we overran a little bit. Uh, but still, hey, more money, more bang for your buck, I guess. Um, so, as always, I've been your host, Johnny Machine Hughes. I use. Bye, guys.